Welcome, ballers. Good evening. Welcome to the 19th episode of A Step Back. 19. 19. Here's your host, Leon Tompkins, and uh, here my main man, as always, Jacob Moses. How you feeling this evening, brother? I am good, and the only thing I got to say, because we missed a week, <laughs> All right, it's good to be back, uh, Mr. Week, but we're about to get it going. I'm feeling good, uh, healthy. We're getting through this quarantine. How's my brother Leon doing down in back home in NYC? Uh, you know, doing pretty well down here, man. Um, played basketball this past week, uh, went out twice, um, felt old, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna get my game back soon. You know, all that all that was good. Um, I know we came out a bit late tonight, but you know, if, if you missed beforehand, gave Johnny uh, um, some time to eat his salmon because he cooked up some mean. He cooked up a mean salmon earlier, uh, if he, right before we came on. Um, I hope he enjoyed that dinner because it <laughs> looked good. <laughs> yeah, Johnny throws down him and Matt and man, got to go down there and see what that's about though. Go to Cali, got to go to Florida, get some good food. I'm about to hit up their house. You see ya. I'm telling you, man, that that that, that food was that food was good. A cooking the air fryer and um, took about 20 minutes. And I mean, he was wolfing it down. So it, we got to give him that extra time now. <laughs> if it if it looked it tastes as good as it looked, he needed that time. <laughs> Show time. Uh. Yeah, man, you know, we, we uh, missed a week last week. We, you know, came out busy, but um, coming back strong. Uh, we've got a lot of news in the league, finally ramping up the effort to this restart. Um, you know, a lot of things going down. The WNBA is coming back soon. we got the NBA coming in a couple of weeks. You know, guys locked in a bubble, can't control themselves. You know, so. <laughs> Damn, sure can't. <laughs> you know. You got snitch oh, hotlines and all, yeah, so dude. you know. Um, <laughs> let's get into it. Good lord. You know, so uh, sure. you know, last we heard, teams are starting to uh, go down and uh, get themselves ready for the restart. Uh, teams reporting mm-hmm. uh, out of players and testing positive. Uh, breaking quarantine, uh, getting food, exercising, but uh, you can see the scrimmages are, I think, are supposed to start sometime next week. Uh, week. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and uh, a lot of the players are coming in and they're expressing the youth uh, for their jerseys. Uh, a lot of them coming in with uh, messages. Uh, I know Kyle Corbett is coming in with Black Lives Matter on his uh, jersey, and uh, LeBron and Anthony Davis decided to use their names. Jimmy Butler's gone nameless. Uh, so practice is going mm-hmm. on. As you can see him starting to get ready. Uh, what's your thoughts on uh, restart kicking off? I mean, I've been ready. I, I like what they're trying to do, you know, putting their messages on their jerseys. You know, they're coming forth and actually – you know, being about it, let's say, you know, they're talking, you know, JJ Reddick had a nice little, I posted it up on that little combo he had. I love that. Um, but the restart is, it's going to be interesting, you know, with COVID and a whole bunch of plays as you, you hit the hard, I say with your squad, because you had just got mellow from the left side. He got COVID, you know, started up Dinwiddie. Who else? Was it uh, Jordan? DeAndre? Yeah, jo- Jordan's out. Chandler's out. You pick a name, he's out. You know, <laughs> you uh, throw, throw the whole team away because yeah. that, that, that's, that's what it pretty much <laughs> happened. Mm-hmm. I didn't know Joe Harris was a free agent. Yeah, he's a free agent at the uh, end of the year. And I'm just like, oh, thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute. So is he going to play? Actually, play for the team, or are they just 
No, Joe Harris is going to play. Uh, mm-hmm. they, they might look into like re-signing him, but I think they have his bird rights. So, I mean, okay. he's, yeah, that makes d- sense. Okay. D- depending on how he does in his restart, I mean, even before that, I think he's going to get a pretty nice payday because he's one of the one of the elite shooters in the league. I don't think he's utilized enough. But, you know, I can get into Joe Harris in, in a bit once because we're going to break down the Eastern Conference teams this episode uh, as we get ready for the uh, restart. Um, but, yeah, you know, the, the, these like players said, come in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they got – let's see what else. What else? Something I want to say. Yeah, it's just going to be interesting. Like we said from the get-go, who's going to be out and who's going to take those spots. You know, it's going to be – the Bible of the fittest, and the, the most complete team is going to take it. I, that's just how it's going to go. Absolutely. And, you know, now with this uh, snitch hotline on, you know, players going to call in, you know, LeBron's going to call out Kawhi, and Chris Paul's going to call out three more players. I think Rondo probably knocked out Chris Paul in the hallway. That's why he's out like six to eight weeks. So, you know, it, uh, as, lo- as long as players don't break protocol and – infect the entire bubble because if one guy gets infected, it affects the whole team. And then if everyone's mm-hmm. in, in, in a confined spot, you might just throw the whole league away. So it's, it's up to the players to really exactly. control themselves and realize mm-hmm. what, they're, what they're there for. Because, you know, you, you say you have a message to send out, you know, get it out the right way. Let's not, you know, let's get it going. Realize the bigger cause. Well, sure. Sure. Uh, That's what I like to see, you know. Together. Yeah. W- with that said, you know, I like the uh, one time I feel like you're tired of this evening. You know, you got the <laughs> got a nice message on your shirt, man. That's that's what's up. <laughs> Respect. Yes, sir. Thank you. I mean, that's what we do, man. It's a lot of us don't get a lot of credit for it, man. They, you know, they see what black fathers don't do other than what we do you know there's a lot of black good black fathers out there me and you included and we every step of the way our children's lives were there no matter what we're there and you know this was pretty good it's a pretty cool present for my kids and my wife this this, i loved it this is like the best present i ever got wearing on my chest proudly i mean you should you know as i said i say it every single time best job in the world facts and uh to, to that effect, a, a lot of these players uh, separated from their families for three months. Um, you know, they're going out for a paycheck. They realize that, you know, they're going to be away from their families. But mm-hmm. um, it's a sacrifice they made. There's some that opted to stay with their families, uh, Trevor Ariza, Wilson Chandler, in order to, you know, keep their families safe and uh, help, help first. Um, but... The, the messages mm-hmm. that they are uh, construing throughout the league is important. Um, I, I like the idea that they're sending mm-hmm. out messages, but I guess there's been a mixed signal as far as how the NBA uh, uh, put it together. Yeah, I guess they were under players were under the impression that you know they could choose whatever they wanted, but apparently the NBA had some uh, had some pre-approved messages that they could wear. Um, I guess LeBron was upset with it, decided he wanted to go with his name. And uh, we'll, we'll see how a lot of these players uh, react. But, um, you know, I, well, what, what, what's your uh, take on, on the players uh, going in with a message? Yeah. I, think I, I think he froze on me. You good, bro? Um, hold on for a second. I'm going to do something. I'm about to... Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to hold on for one second. I'm going to switch to my phone. For some That's reason, cool. it's not it's uh, acting up a little bit. So give me one <laughs> second. I'll be right back. I'm going to leave this and I'm going to join on my phone. Cool. Give me one second. Um, so I, I would say as far as the NBA um, trying to – control the narrative I can see how the players would be upset and the players 
I, I can see having an issue with uh, going in as one thing, but NBA coming out with another. I always say that the biggest impact that the players could make would be to uh, to boycott the Olympics. Mm-hmm. You know, that would be that would be real interesting, actually. You, like you said, you, know, you want a point that would be something. That would be, <laughs> you talk about sparking a movement that would be. Yeah, you know, if the players want to say, well, you know, I'm not going to affect a paycheck, but I won't play for a country that you know. I feel it's not doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. I, they could say, you know what? I refuse to play mm-hmm. in the Olympics. So, you know, mm-hmm. if that that's one avenue I, I think they might be able to take if they really feel mm-hmm. strongly about how their message is mm-hmm. mm-hmm. perceived. So, I can see that. You know, that. That's one avenue I, I think, I think they might see. be able to take. And hold on for one second. If they really feel strongly about. Hold on, let me turn this out. Okay. All right, there we go. Yeah, um, yeah, I would want to see something like that because, as we know, more players are not afraid. It's good that more players are actually coming out and not afraid to express their true feelings instead of holding them in like years past. Because you know, it'll be one or two people actually coming out and saying what they have to say. Now they're coming out in bunches, like, "Hey, this is you know, this is real. This mm-hmm. is a real movement. This is not just a spur of the moment kind of thing." And this is what we need, you know, just as a people, minority as a whole. We, everybody got to come together, you know, everybody, not even minorities, everybody got to come together and speak out about it. And if if it takes going to the Olympics and saying, hey, it's not happening, and you start affecting people's pockets, that, that's what happened. Look at the Redskins. You, you better believe as soon as those, you know, FedEx, now we're about to pull our sponsor. Oh, yeah, we'll change that name right then and there. Boom. Mm-hmm. That's how it happens. So, yeah, if the NBA players are like, you know what, I don't want to play for USA until this, this, mm-hmm. and this happens, mm-hmm. best, best believe they'll, they'll probably, you know, start making some moves. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, Drew Holiday, he's donating all his game checks uh, to various charities and Black Lives Matter movement, so you know he's always been a part of the cause. That's really nice. Mm-hmm. To hear. Yeah, I like you. Yeah. Uh, well, more. I mean, yeah, this one, Beal or Dane did it. It's, just, it's a few of them now. That's actually. Um. So just. Yeah, I think Beal is out. Dane might be doing it. I'm almost certain mm-hmm. he will. Uh, mm-hmm. Melo might be another. Uh, but mm-hmm. you know, a lot of these guys are getting back in uh, game shape. You know, having three months off, Melo slimmed down. The Joker, he slimmed down. Looks like Zion slimmed down too. So um, this restart will be real interesting, considering you know a lot of these guys had three months off. Maybe Ben Simmons might have uh, in the jump shot. Yeah, yeah, although it didn't look like it recently. I don't know. <laughs> no. Definitely. No. I got no joke. But like um, Henry just said, we can go on. He said, Kenny Stills got arrested for protesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, uh, apparently, yeah. He was, he went out um in a march for uh, Breonna Taylor, and mm-hmm. he, got, he got arrested, and he had the shirt. Find mm-hmm. you know um, the Breonna Taylor shirt in his mugshot. So you mm-hmm. know he's he's always been um, out there for the cause, and he's mm-hmm. been very outspoken. You know he takes a knee and all, and um, you can see that they're not just talking to talk; they're more mm-hmm. walking to walk. Mm-hmm. And uh, speaking of that, Kyrie Irving, um, he had a special uh, for the Breonna Taylor. A special last week. Uh, he's been donating mm-hmm. his uh, time and money. So, you know, he's been outspoken about the restart of the league, but mm-hmm. he's also been outspoken about social justice. So, you know, he, with him, his character, you always try to find out where his intentions are. So far, it's been 
it's been genuine, so you can't, you know, it's hard to knock them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Kyrie, he just, I don't know, I think sometimes he, his heart speaks before his mind, like, per se, like, his mm-hmm. heart is there, but it, the, it comes out, is just wrong, but we all know he had, you know, good intentions, and, you know, with the whole Breonna Taylor situation, that's, that's where he wanted to be, and he wanted to support it. He he knows where he is on that one, but I, I give him that. He's yeah, he's he's definitely been out there. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, thank Welcome you, Robert. Back. Thank you, Robert. He uh, said the NBA is by far the most progressive league um, of all sports. Uh-huh. You know, you look throughout the sports, uh, baseball. They were trying to. Uh, <laughs> To, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> proclaim Black yeah. Lives Matter, but you know, you get a lot of pushback. Uh, the NFL is trying mm-hmm. to, to change the names, uh, but you know, little by little, each league is are taking steps mm-hmm. to try to, you know, like, you could say right or wrong, but try to make everyone feel inclusive. Mm-hmm. But um, and it's. And also, you can't feel bad. Like, I don't know. It's kind of like people feel bad for making people uncomfortable. Like, no, make them uncomfortable. That, that's, that's what I would do. You know, show your, show your pride. Show your real, you know, don't hold back for anybody. What are they going to do? You're still making the money in the league. It's, and what? What are they going to say? A few people not show up to the game? Mm-hmm. No. I mean, not everybody's going to stand up and go, oh, I'm not going to go to this game. No. Let your voice be heard. Every sport doesn't matter. Matter who, whoever doesn't matter what people think. Say what you gotta say. Facts, you know. I, I mean, and let's be real. A, a lot of these sports um, really don't try to appeal to the uh, a broad, uh, the, the, a good majority of their audience. So mm-hmm. when when they, I guess when they finally do, it kind of you see a pushback you know, don't involve politics, oh, yeah. this and that. And then you realize, you know, these players have something to say, that they are the top 1% that, you know what, we can't do what they do. They have a platform, allow them to use it. And mm-hmm. if these guys have a message to put out, who are we to stop them? That's what this country is about, you know, freedom exactly. of speech. And mm-hmm. and freedom of expression. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and, and I'm about and to get canceled right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, and, and I'm no, gonna, if, if players going to say, you know, if people are going to say, you know what, I'm going to stop watching. Well, you're going to be you're going to stop watching a lot of uh, leagues because NBA is doing it, MLB is doing it, NFL is doing it. If you got a problem, mm-hmm. you can go watch hockey. Mm-hmm. So exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, you can say whatever you want and, you know, it comes to the point of, you know, all black lives matter and then it turns into all lives matter and blah, blah, blah. No, this is not. And, you know, how many times that we have to explain it to people? It's it's not the point of black lives just matter. That No, it's we matter and it's more than just one case, you know, systematic race, you know, racial, uh, my goodness, can't even talk. Systematic racism, racism, and just the stuff keeps happening every single time. Right. And then it's going to take something like this, you know, the athletes that a lot of people look up to and watch every time and just say, hey, this is what's going on. Like you said, use your platform, do what you got to do. And maybe something gets done, but yeah, and, mm-hmm. and and looking at a lot of these players, like think about it. They're like, once they step off that field or the court, they're just another person, and mm-hmm. I, I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. You know, they, you don't. They get stopped. People get you know stopped all the time, but their celebrity allows them more or less to, uh, to, to get away. I wouldn't say get away, but have less pressure than your average person. Mm-hmm. And absolutely. 
these are the voices that the average person would need, you know. And so if they decide to you to do that, and if you decide to stop watching, we all have those choices. But don't, you know, it, it's unfortunate to try to be selfish. Oh yeah, and then you notice it'll come out. Oh, it's freedom of speech. Yeah, it's freedom of speech until your black ass start using it. Then oh, it's a problem. Yes, I thought I was going to get a little bit candid, but that's how it is. You know, it's freedom of speech until. You know, no, it's not free. It's freedom of speech for everybody. It doesn't matter. And until you get it, <laughs> just keep saying it. it, it yeah, it, you just keep in, in, ingraining it in their minds because you, you're not going to stop hearing it. Like I said, you're going to hear it in every sport. You're going to hear it on TV. You're going to mm -hmm. see the press conferences, interviews on Sports Center. Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. That's, mm -hmm. You're going to keep hearing it. If you don't like it, turn off your TV mm -hmm. or watch hockey. That's it. <laughs> hey, that's all you got. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, but I'm glad these players are coming back. They got a message to, to spread out. And uh, I'm excited to see how these guys come back and, and, and with the with a fresh start and uh, see how it comes out. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully, so, any COVID problems going on? COVID. I mean, got Dwight Howard in a party by himself. Say, say, hey, man. <laughs> My man party, one man army. Go ahead, Dwight, do your thing. I mean, what I'm trying to get is, you know nobody else can come in, in, in the bubble. You. He knows no women exactly. are showing up. <laughs> I mean, what, what are we gonna do? Square dance in the corner with a, with, I guess JR gonna bring some uh, Hennessy and whatnot. He's gonna square dance in the corner? I don't know, man. <laughs> Drinking but, a hand in the two step, that's it. That, that, Drinking a hand in the two step. That food, uh, <laughs> going off about <laughs> the food. Uh, you have any thoughts on the food and the, hotel accommodations for these guys? Yeah. And I, I got to go with my guy Jay Williams on this one. Listen, <laughs> you are a millionaire. Like, don't don't complain about it. Come on now. It's not like, just think about it as like you're back in college, but you got a little bit more money. <laughs> like, let's do it like that. Yeah. But come on, don't say, oh, yeah, this food is trash. I'm pretty sure they're going to, you, you can accommodate that. Uh, that's just really the food and then the lodgings. What do you think? It's like living in a damn dorm. Like you're all basically on the same floors. You know, you're basically seeing the same people. I mean, don't don't make a big deal out of it. Don't just don't push away. Don't try to cover up what this is all about. You know, you're restarting. Plus, get you like like we're saying, get the messages out. Don't start complaining about you know little shit. Don't don't do that. Don't make it petty. Uh, yeah. I, I'm just not a, that I'm not a fan of. Just get your damn food and shut up. Stop. Don't make yourself look stupid. Just, just chill out, have fun. You know, make your money, get the message out, and ball out. That's it. Yeah, I mean, these guys knew what they signed up for. I mean, I don't know what the most of the complaining is about. I mean, I'm pretty sure in the beginning the food won't be great, but you know they're gonna have like world-class chefs there so exactly uh, and, come on and, and they know you know if they want better food they can hire their own chefs to come in so it's not a it's not a big deal but i guess it's more just mm -hmm. for you know shock value mm -hmm. it definitely gotta be because i just i saw that stuff I'm like the food you complain about the damn food what the hell I can say only that I can see you on like really complaining about not seeing your family. That's the only thing. Can't yeah. be that bad, you know. I mean, like you eating slop or something like that, or army rack rations or some shit like that. You know, like growing up on like uh, Frank's and beans and shit, you know. No right, government cheese. Come on, big ass. Nah. Oh, yeah, come that, on, man. That <laughs> these guys grew up worse. Exactly, man. All you had was juicy juice and water, man. You better be happy. Juice, juice, wonder bread, not even hot dog buns, and just wonder bread with that. Call it a day. Word. Having a pop, bologna, get that little pop 
and that baloney make it good like that, and that that's what you had. Come on, make it happen. Chill. Yeah, Let's man. Yeah these, yeah, these guys gotta you know chill out, realize what the cause is, and mm-hmm. you know. Come on. Let's go. Make it um. Chill. The Eastern Conference is going to be one of the worst conferences uh, mm-hmm. known to man. Um, <laughs> one, at, one to nine, the Wizards more or less just uh, mailed it in. Um, we're going to take a look at the standings as they are. Uh, let me see what I got. See the screen. Got the Milwaukee Bucks at the on the top of the, of the conference. Mm-hmm. Raptors in second place. Uh, Boston three, Miami four, Indiana five, Philly six, Brooklyn in the seventh spot, Orlando mm-hmm. eight, and uh, Washington is five and a half out behind the Magic. Uh, okay. Really, the Bucks more or less have that top spot. Uh, this seating is more or less between three and six within the next eight games. Should we try to get that push going? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so we'll we'll take a look at the schedule uh, for each team, and we'll get thoughts on each team coming up. Uh, so we got the Milwaukee Bucks coming up uh, top. Top seed in the East, Giannis and company, Brooke Lopez coming back, uh, Chris Middleton. Uh, six and a half up on the second spot, second place Raptors. What your, what's your thoughts on the Bucks coming up? The Bucks, okay, looking at this, they got a – well, except for the Nets, but they really don't have anybody. Other than that, they got a tough little schedule besides, like, the end of it to August. You got to think, Boston – they don't have really have any – all their stars are pro- – they're playing, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so that's going to be a really good one. Tatum, Giannis going at it. I like that. The Rockets, you know, James Harden. And, whoa, whoa, wait, wait Russ, Westbrook, he got – he didn't he get COVID? Yeah, Westbrook has COVID. So I, I would assume if he has the uh, – completes a 10-day quarantine, he might be mm-hmm. back in time for the restart. But – uh, okay. I, I he I, I know he's definitely uh hmm. positive. So I guess okay, earlier so easy you got to come back, but okay, so with the Rockets, you know, I can see Bucks winning that one. Mm-hmm. They're gonna whip on the Nets. The Heat, of course, they got a nice little complete team. That could have been my ECF right there. Just to see those two go at it. It would have been nice, you know, like if we had a full season, I could have saw that. That's going to be, you know, Luca and KP. Mm-hmm. That would be a nice test for them. The Raptors. The Raptors are a tough team. Even without Kawhi, they're, you know, they're really good. So the Wizards, they're going to spank them. And Memphis, they're a little bit too raw to do anything. So, but yeah, the Bucks right now is, I can see them going to easy. Seven and one. <laughs> that stretch right there. I can see it. It's, yeah. yeah. I mean, it. I, I, the tough games I take out of here, I, I think Dallas will be tough. I think Miami mm-hmm. will definitely be tough. You know, Jimmy Butler always works hard. Uh, mm-hmm. Grizzlies might have a spot locked up by the time they get to uh, to the end. But the Celtics, um, I'm intrigued by. Uh, we get them in a few. Uh, the Rockets with their small ball. I, 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 this will, the Rockets will be very interesting to, to watch because of their small ball five out lineup. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm intrigued to see how they defend uh, Giannis. It'll be, it'll be a good test to see how they might play the Lakers. Oh, yeah, for sure. But uh, the Bucks. Yeah. Yeah, Bucks. I you know I just want to see uh, how Middleton and Bledsoe and all these guys coming back from injury. I don't, I'm not sure if Brogdon uh, uh, will be back by then. I don't think so. No. But uh, it took a hit. 
yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see how they how they come back. They got a nice little healthy lead, so I, I don't see them moving off that top spot going into the playoffs. Wait, actually, isn't Brogdon Indiana? Oh no. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I, I, I had a brain fart there. No, that's fine. I just thought, of, wait a minute. Yeah. You don't have them. No, that's fine. That, so, I don't know. The Bucks might not be as invincible as you think. You know, you never know. They may get snuck up on. Yeah, I, I, I just see Milwaukee using this as a tune-up. Um, this is some nice little competition. Uh, for mm-hmm. them, and they'll just beat up on whoever the eighth spot is. I just hope it isn't Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, it'll be them. Gotta be them. Come on. Uh, next, we're gonna go over here to the Raptors. You know, second seed. Mm-hmm. Six and a half back. They start off with the Lakers. Uh, tough test for them, but you know, coming three months off, everybody's more or less at, at the same point. Uh, what, what's your take on the Raptors here? They have they have a they have a tough schedule too. Or you see how they're mixing it up with LA. That's right off the jump. You got LA and Miami, so that they can easily you know. Get rocked two games, start out 0 and 2. The Magic, yeah, they're, yeah, you know, they have a nice little young squad there, and Booch and Aaron Gordon and Markel, you know, the rejuvenated Markel Fultz. Mm-hmm. But I think the Raptors are ultimately be too strong for them. The Celtics, you know, they're going to be tough for anybody with their lineup. They have one of the most complete lineups in the NBA, you know. Like I said, I mentioned Tatum, Kemba, Jalen. I mean, Hayward, you know, he's back. And, you know, Cantor, can't forget about him. He's a nice little double-double machine, can't play defense. But, hey, that's what you got Daniel Tice for. And, you know, even their bench isn't too bad. You know, Wanamaker, Marcus Smart, is he? He he should be back, right? Yeah, he's back. Okay, so, yeah, you got him. Boston doesn't even look out for him, man. They, they could sneak up in. Do something. Then you got Memphis, like I said before. That'll be a nice little game to have, but I can see Toronto coming out on that one. The Bucks, you know, we discussed that. We'll see. 76ers, your your team that you really pretty high on. I yeah. that would be rematch. Might <laughs> 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 be difficult on this one. <laughs> and then of course, you know, the Joker plays. He's playing. They have another complete team that you really got to watch out for with the Nuggets. So the Raptors, they they break even. I'd be surprised, to be honest. Yeah, uh, they they break even. They probably hold that two spot unless uh, Boston really comes on strong and and overtakes them. But um, looking at this schedule, it it, it it's pretty tough because I can see the Grizzlies. Um, because they got him in the middle here, so they'll be pretty hungry trying to hold on to that eight spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Magic, you know, the Magic or the Magic. I'm, I'm hearing uh, good things about Mo Bamba. He apparently put on some weight. and uh, Yeah? Go, yeah, we'll see if they're going to put him in a rotation. Uh, mm-hmm. The Sixers they're, said they're trying out uh, Ben Simmons at power forward. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, the Raptors breaking even. I, I I don't see him going any lower than three going into the playoffs. And uh, Serge Ibaka, you know Siakam, Marcus Gasol's mm-hmm. been there, so it, it it's a good mix of veterans. They got some young fresh legs uh, uh, coming in with Van Fleet and uh, you know Kyle Lowry. Before. So championship team, proven pedigree. Uh, they'll, they'll be right. It's good tune up for them going into the postseason. Oh, yeah, Van Vliet's playing for a contract, so you know he's going to bring it. Absolutely. Uh, here we get the Boston Celtics three seed. Uh, kick off tough against the Bucks. Um, mm. I, I like that Blazer matchup, that, that point guard, Ken Bud. Uh, Lillard uh, matchup is going to be real nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Portland is something to play for early. Trying to get in that eight seed, uh, playing for that eight seed. Uh, so, you know, Poland's going to bring it. Uh, here we go with Miami again. The uh, replace mm-hmm. Nets. <laughs> I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> replace Nets. Uh, that's pretty good. 
uh, uh, you know, Raptors again, Magic. I mean, it's a fairly, I'd say, favorable schedule mm-hmm. uh, for Boston. Uh, really the tough one, probably Milwaukee. But if you get them in the beginning, that's where everybody is. Everybody's on even playing field. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see Kemba come back, Tatum, mm-hmm. uh, see the work he's put in. Um, I, I, I want to see those big men um, mm-hmm. that's been, you know, laying in the cut, uh, so to say, Robert Williams. Um, I want to see it. I don't know if Taco would get any run, but Robert. He should. I mean, if if he's been putting in the work during during uh, quarantine, mm-hmm. I, I could see him being like a real sleep at real, real sleeper. Uh, but Absolutely. yeah, I, I, I'm I'm intrigued to see Robert Williams and uh, and his Cantor because you know Cantor's going to give you a double double, like you said, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Wanamaker and Carson Edwards. I'm, I'm, yes, I like that kid. Yeah, I, I want to see if he might break the rotation. He might get some time here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really a good time to uh, get a good look at you know your 12th and 13th men mm-hmm. on the team. Uh, what's your thoughts on uh, Boston here? Um, this they actually, I'm gonna go on a limb and say they might they're gonna be my pick coming out the East. You know. I'm big on Tatum. You wonder why. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that kid, I mean, I just like him ever since. Like, he has it. You know, he does everything well on the floor. I'm going to go with my pop smoker for his. Don't go with Tatum. Uh, but, um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he's – and Kimba, you know, it's just you don't have to say anything about Kimba. You know what he's going to bring. Hayward's looking healthy. Um, Robert Williams, I really like. So I'm with you there. He could be a nice defensive anchor for a team. Um, Cantor, I've always liked, even with the Knicks. I hope they, you know, we got Mitch now, but if Mitch didn't come along, I would have loved to keep Cantor. And plus, it's the heart that he plays with. You know, he's that mouthpiece on the floor. He mm-hmm. will defend every single player on that on his team on that floor. And you need a guy like that. Um, who else we got? Jalen Brown is one of my favorite plays in the league. I swear that kid is going to be, you know, I think he'll be top. If he reaches his potential, top five MVP every year. But that's how good mm-hmm. he is. He's good on the defensively. He's good. Learning how to shoot. He's getting there. You know, he's athletic. He's every, he does everything right on the floor. But their heel might be the bench. Even though they have players that do it for putting it together, like Taco, put him in there. You know, come on, you have you know, have him picked up the one picking up a little bit of like fouls or something like that. But with his sides, why would you not want to put that in your rotation? If you have it, use it. Daniel Tice, he's a mm-hmm. knockdown shooter, surprisingly. There's another yeah. guy they have. I can't remember his throwing name, but um not Carson, that was another kind of big guy, but Boston's definitely my pick coming out the east. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt Bushel, he has said the same thing. He has the uh, Celtics coming out the East as well. So uh, you and Matt on the mm-hmm. same page. Uh, I, I like Boston. They're, they're deep. Um, mm-hmm. I, if you asked me three months ago without Kemba, I don't think they would have made it past the second round, but they are one of those sleepers that, you know, good tune-up for them here. I'd probably see them going like uh, six and two, Five and three, mm-hmm. uh, no lower than the third seed, um, mm-hmm. and no higher, obviously, in the second. So um, it'll mm-hmm. be interesting to see what matchup they get because the four through six is really where the dogfight is. Oh, yeah. I'm loving that one right there. The East is going to kind of have to be good. <laughs> it's going to be better than expected. I'm telling you. I mean, yeah, the top six might, might, might be really good once you get to the bottom two, which is more or less easy pickings for the top two seed. <laughs> Barbecue chicken. Barbecue. Uh, so we, here we go, fourth, uh, fourth seed, Miami Heat. Mm-hmm. Got start off here with the Denver Nuggets. That's a tough matchup. Start off with, uh, yeah. um, you know, Joker slimmed down. Apparently he can move a little bit. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. Jamal Murray, Gary Harris. The only thing about Denver is they're not in a mile high city, so they can't use mm-hmm. that altitude um, to their advantage. But 
you know, unless they brought, you know, Denver Hardwood with them, it's more or less even <laughs> playing field. Mm-hmm. Um, um, oh, yeah. Uh, see, we got the Raptors, Celtics, Bucks. Um, they invite the Suns down there. That's a, that's, you know, know what? what? You know what? No, you, the, the Suns, the Suns, <laughs> the Suns is a team that, you know, with nothing to play for, just, I'm going to just mm-hmm. come in willy-nilly, and you know Devin Book is going to score. He's going off. Yeah, he, that, that, that dude. Yeah, I can see that. But you know who I would have rather seen? The Kings. No, the, the Kings are way too, too uh, – uh, I know. I just, I just like them like a, like something like that. You throw one of those teams in there, the Kings, because they'll run you to death. But, I, I, think, um, I think the Suns will do that. Rubio, DeAndre Ayton. They got a big man and a scorer. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know they're bad, but you know they'll run you to death and probably put oh, up about 125. So mm-hmm. you got Ubre having a breakout. He was having a breakout year. I think I think Ubre is out for this one, but is he out? Yeah, yeah, Ubre is out. But um, the Suns are a team that you with a deadly scorer like Booker, you, mm-hmm. you can't take them lightly. So I I, I like the addition of the Suns here. It, it's it's better than you know the Knicks. That's true. Well, you know, I didn't I didn't want to see the Knicks in anyway. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're embarrassed us even more than you had. Well, actually, no. I wouldn't mind it because then they get their ass kicked. Then our seating will be a little bit better for the lottery. So right. that would have been fine. But it is what it is. And yeah, I get to see. I want to see. I get to see my boy Booker play. So. Yeah, that, that's that's always good. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not. That, I'm not that no, no, no. You you're about to get muted again. Um, finish off the schedule with the Pacers. Um, some exciting news out of there. Oladipo might be playing. Uh, he said he's been working out down there, feeling good. So that will change the entire landscape if uh, Oladipo plays because, you know, it, mm-hmm. it lengthens that rotation. He's a capable scorer. I, I would have him mm-hmm. coming off the bench. Uh, but yes. um, Indiana's a deep team. Uh, depending mm-hmm. on if Oladipo plays, that, that obviously will uh, uh, affect the, the seedings. Uh, OKC, Chris Paul, you know, been there, done that. He might snitch a few people out before. Uh, it's all said and done mm-hmm. here because, you know, that's, that's what he does. Stephen Adams, Paul George. Uh, I'm excited to see how uh, Paul George is able to play. Oh, no, he's on the Clippers. What am I talking about here? Um, mm-hmm. uh SGA. Love that kid. Yeah. Um, so OKC towards the end and the Pacers uh, to end the scrimmage. Um, probably see me yeah, heat okay. going. Uh, mm. I see him going five and three. Four and four. The mm. toss up is really the Celtics yeah. and the Pacers to me. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, yeah, definitely see that. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Butler working hard. You know he's gonna, you know, again that playoff pedigree. He's gonna drag his team to the finish line, and he finished what he started. You know, uh, from the beginning of the season. You know, Tyler Hero I think might be back. You know, Bam at a bio, and Goran Dragic, <laughs> capable six man off the bench. So um, Miami's a deep team, well coached. I'm um, excited to see how they uh, finish off the season. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely like I'm trying to think. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely like them. They're one of the sleeper teams that we had yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, it definitely mm-hmm. was. Uh, here we get to the Pacers. Uh, I believe they're the fifth seed, starting off with the Sixers. Uh Tough matchup for them. If Embiid is motivated, um, treat to see that line if the Sixers will run out. But uh, Pacers against the Wizards, that's an easy win for the Pacers. The Wizards are just dragging bodies out there. Uh, <laughs> I got the Wizards, Magic, Suns. Uh, and the, that's a pretty like nice, uh, calm stretch for them. And the Lakers, the Heat, the Rockets, and I'm going to show off with the Heat. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Lakers are going to be tough. Hope they might be, uh, 
we might be tried around fourth or fifth game. So uh, that'll be an intriguing matchup. Um, mm -hmm. I want to see how Miles Turner comes out and, you know, how Sabonis is going to play. Um, mm -hmm. Pacers are a deep team. They're also pretty well coached. Um, I, I, like I said, if Oladipo is back, it's very obviously a better team. But um, I, I want to see the Pacers get over that hump because they were so close so many times. <laughs> It, it, yeah, they definitely. They, I don't know if they'll get there. I mean, they'll put up a fight, but I don't think they'll get there. I, mean, I just don't think they have enough. No, they have enough to be competitive, but over the top, they just they don't have it. Plus, their bench is really weak. I, I, I just can't see them doing it. I can if they go four, four and four at best for them. Because without all the people, they like you said, it's big. Mm -hmm. So I I don't. So that's the, and then if he comes off the bench, yeah, reserve those you know reserve those legs for him. But other than that, I mean you I mean you need big time games from your front court because that's where your that's where your play is going to be. That's where your production is going to come into play mostly. It's from the front court, with, especially with no Brogdon. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, I'd like to see McDermott really uh, come along. Cause, you know, you've seen uh, flashes from him, but you've never seen, like, the entire repertoire. And, you know, mm -hmm. McDermott's a knockdown shooter, and knockdown shooters are key in the playoffs. And um, mm -hmm. I, I hope this tune-up will get him in the rotation and really get him going because uh, mm -hmm. McDermott, another piece off the bench, that could really help this team. Oh, for sure. Um, it's another kid, uh, Olaze. That's mm -hmm. another one. If he can get it going, they, they're higher on him. And he can stretch the floor as well. So maybe he can get something going too, but only only people know definitely need the, the wild card if he plays. Yeah, I, I, I'm dying to see um, what his decision is. I, I hope he plays, but I can understand if he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have the 76ers, uh, one of who I said would come out of the Eastern Conference. Joel Embiid is a future MVP in the league. You know, if he's just motivated, if Ben, uh, ben Simmons is able to, uh, now that they're moving him to the four, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully it will create some space for the, the rest of the team. Uh, have a primary ball handler, but have to respect the ball handler's jump shot, which will probably uh, play into the spacing on the floor. Um, mm -hmm. I guess that would move Al Horford to the bench. Um, I'm, I'm trying to see who they probably put in that starting lineup, mm -hmm. probably like Shake Milton or uh, yeah. uh, Alec Burks. Um, Tobias mm -hmm. Harris, uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of him. Mm -hmm. like. yeah. uh, looking at the schedule, the Pacers, the Spurs. Uh, first mention of the Spurs here. Uh, we've got the Wizards, Magic, <laughs> the Blazers, Suns. It seems like a real easy schedule for the uh, Sixers here. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, if, mm -hmm. if Embiid and Simmons can really get that chemistry going, roll that momentum oh, into the playoffs, maybe jump up to the fourth seed. If they get really mm -hmm. hot, maybe the third, but um, the Sixers really can use this as a chemistry builder. Uh, Brett Brown has been much uh, critiqued for his mm -hmm. coaching methods in the playoffs as well as the season. So um, hopefully this, this this break has mm -hmm. got them going in the right direction and hopefully get them to their full potential. Oh, yeah. If he doesn't get it, I'll give him another. Well, COVID, so you kind of, I'll give him one more year. If he can't get it right with this team, yeah, he's about to get the boot. Yeah, this but, team yeah. is way too talented. Mm -hmm. not, to, not to at least go to the finals or at least the Eastern Conference finals and make some kind of noise. So, but yeah, I can see, yeah, six and two, maybe, definitely. Yeah, uh, I can see yeah. them. Doing. 
the sixty two, you know, seven and one. Maybe they have trouble with maybe Portland. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the team I really see them maybe have a problem with. But other than that, they about to, like you said, just light, light and short. Yeah, the Wizards, the Spurs. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we we won't spend much time here. Uh, we got the <laughs> now go through it, go through, go through it. We got the Brooklyn Nets calling to replace Nets because what was on this team in the winter sure is only here now. Man, man, they have a well, except for the oh yeah, never mind. They they can they can scare into the playoffs, man. You know what? They they can beat the Magic. They got the Wizards, so they can they might be able to sneak out a two and zero start. Then they probably gonna get the they gonna get the boots tanned into them, boost the asses by the Bucks and the Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord! But then you got the Kings. Okay, yeah, I can see them. I can see them skidding into the playoffs. Yeah, you, I, I, I I don't see any more than four wins. Um, <laughs> All, all I really want to see here is Karis Levert take this team. Um, we take a, a, a leadership role, him and Jared Allen, and take the momentum into the offseason and try not to break this team up and show that Levert is the third star. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Jamal Crawford, he's, he's there just, you know, Phil, um, I, I, I'd like to see a lot of these other guys um, who really didn't get to shine. Uh, Ku Roots, Zion and Musa. Mm-hmm. Uh, now right. we got Tal of the Creator Johnson. So, who? You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's what I said about half this team. You know, that snaggle with the missing two. Well, my man Henry said next. <laughs> but yeah, I. Man, yeah, Karis, this is going to be his time to shine, man. This is, you want to be a leader, and you want whoever is coaching your team next year to actually say, hey, this is who we're going to use. Yeah, I don't know how much Moose is going to do. Karut, maybe. I told you not to call him KP Light ever in your life. You know, listen. But uh, KP Light. I'm never getting over that. Man, I heard, man. Ugh. But yeah, I, you'll, you'll hear it again. No, oh God, it's just ugh. But Joe Harris, I mean, you got him. And that's one person I'm hoping to we snatch from y'all because we we need some shooting. But Joe Harris is a dude. He's a link on a team like that. Like you need that him on that team. Because you, if you get KD back, I'll say this won't be it. But next year, you guys are you guys are gonna be like a top three seed easily. If yeah. Kyrie keeps his head Well, you know, that, that's, a, that's an adventure into itself. But, <laughs> Great adventure. Well, you know, like, like, like we say, you know, I, I like to see Levert really take charge of the team. And um, I'm interested to see how Jock Vaughn uh, coaches this, this bunch. Um, if he's able to get anything out of this, uh, out of this group, maybe he can convince them not to, you know, shop around for it. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Popovich or or mm-hmm. Thibodeau or have Jason Kidd 2.0. Question Didn't Jock Vaughn coach already? Or am I going crazy? He was the coach of the Magic. Oh, I swear, I, for some reason, I don't know why I thought he was the coach of the Magic. He, he was the assistant coach. Okay. That okay. was. Yeah, I, I can see how you can confuse them with Avery Johnson because they're like short little black guys. So, you know, they, <laughs> if they're, if they're easily, you can easily confuse them. I was just like, damn. But yeah, if you win four games, just be happy. <laughs> hey, if Levert can drop 50 and show that, you know, Kyrie and Katie can't trade them, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm happy. So, yeah. this came from a Major hit. I just mm-hmm. want to give them a... Uh, oh. oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And sure. the AFC, the Orlando Magic, uh, they're a half game b- 
behind the net. Uh, mm -hmm. So that 7-8 spot is more or less life or death yeah, between Milwaukee mm -hmm. and Toronto. Um, you know, you know Vucevic, you know Aaron Gordon. I want to see if Markel Fultz can continue his prog progression. Um, Fournier and Terrence Ross, you know, they, they play defense. Uh, Clifford coaches them well. Mm -hmm. the, the guy I am intrigued by is Mo Bamba. I, I would love to see if he gets in the rotation. Uh, apparently he put on some weight. He was a high draft pick. Mm -hmm. um, if he's able to come in and make an impact and uh, quite possibly, you know, turn some heads. Uh, that's how Bam Adebayo started out, you know. Exactly. If he's able to get some minutes, establish his role and – you know, maybe think, uh, the Magic's force has changed. Uh, well, what's your thoughts on the Magic here? Yeah, I like. I do agree with you on Bomba. If he gets the time, he can be an asset to the team. Well, he'll become an asset, and they'll trade him. But, uh, <laughs> you know how they work. But uh, I can see a three. Three wins? Three, three automatic wins, I think. The Nets. Well, no. No, no, no. Hold up. Yeah, Where's three. Three. God <laughs> ah, damn, man. You, you turn it down. I don't give a fuck. No, no. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I can see the Nets beating the Nets twice. I can see them beating the Kings. And that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I uh, they probably split with the Nets. Um, the Pelicans, depending on where they are at the time, they they, they might just fold up and go home if, uh, you know, the Pelicans aren't anywhere in the hunt by the last game of the season. Uh, mm. Yeah, we'll, but, you know, we'll get into the Western Conference next week because that's obviously the much more competitive conference and they got about, like, ten teams. Exactly. Um, yeah, I can. so you see yeah. three wins. I'll give them four. And then on that New Orleans game, you don't know how CMC they're gonna. Be yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. I might give them four. That's it. <laughs> see him sneaking up on any of these uh, top contenders here: Raptors or Pacers? Who the Magic? Yeah. Shit, no. <laughs> Yeah, it's right where they are. <laughs> they are not going anywhere. But you you never know. But it's another those are it's another one of those teams where the talent is there, but it's not enough. Because Aaron Gordon has to take I'll say an astronomical step for them to actually, I mean, really sneak up on somebody. I mean he now he can't he's getting a he's getting that mid range in the three point game going, but I mean, he has to make a big step for him to do anything. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, yeah. I'd love to see Markel uh, complete his progression. Because um, mm -hmm. he looked so, so far, he looked pretty good this year. He proved that mm -hmm. jump shot. Fourth um, uh, expected. So uh, I'm intrigued to see what goes on. And like you say, the 7 8. The seven eight fight is really what it's about because nobody wants to play the Bucks in the first round. No. And uh here we won't spend much time on this because there's nobody left. The Washington <laughs> Wizards have five and a half out. Um you know what, it's pointless to look at their schedule. Nobody's on the team. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm hoping they beat the Nets so I can laugh. <laughs> Man, if they do that, you know, you got Gary Payton the third or well, no, Gary Payton the second. Yeah, there you go. But, but um Yeah. Yeah, they ain't winning no games. <laughs> maybe, maybe the Suns. The Suns are the first two. If they if they don't win any of those right there, yeah. Winless. I mean, don't listen, Beal is out, Bertans is out, uh Wall is out. You name a player, he's out. Um, the player, Tachimura. Yeah, the play, that's, yeah, I was going to say, the player to watch is Tachimura. Um, <laughs> uh, high draft pick, uh, 
uh, top 10 mm -hmm. really he showed did. some promise uh, throughout the year. Um, it should be his time to shine. Really look forward to next year. Um, good little tune-up for him. Show out to the league what he has because he has some game. He'd stretch out. Um, he's gaining some strength. Uh, a lot of comparisons to uh, Giannis uh, as far as his uh, length and um, ability to stretch the floor with, with, with his length and, and strides. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Good rebounder, too. Good rebounder. Good rebounder. Um, Thomas Bryant, uh, he's showing a team. Uh, Mahimi. Raw. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but th th this team lacking so much uh, firepower. Um, they're, uh, you know, probably mail it in in about four games. <laughs> yeah, it's might be lights out for the Wizards. Think you're able to reinstall? Think you might want to play? Um, <laughs> call him up. But um, yeah, the Wizards. I, I like actually. I like Gary Payton second. The guy had well, who didn't kick the Knicks ass? But he actually he shows some things. His vision isn't bad. You know he plays tough. You know what that is. You know you you know about that toughness. But yeah, he he can ball. You know, I don't think – once he got a chance, he showed that he can ball. But um, I don't know. There's, I can't even – yeah, it's pretty much Hachimura and his progression. If they yep. get anything else, hey, they do. I mean, I'll tell you what they could do. I mean, they could call up Isaiah Thomas again and, you know, <laughs> ask, some of that, ask some of that magic. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm pretty <laughs> sure – I'm pretty sure he got his uniform laying around somewhere, so – they gotta be. It's gotta be. Yeah. Wizards here, you know, thank you for coming. <laughs> um Yeah, they're five and a half out. They'll probably be eliminated within, you know, two or three games. So because yeah, anyway. I, I believe it's a four and a half game gap between the eighth and ninth spot that guarantees the that clinches the playoff seed. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else was I going to say? Speaking of that, league pass. Um, I haven't heard any word on it, but um, the, the league, yeah, I, I haven't heard any word if it's free or not. Huh. Speaking of that, you know, I admin Henry, you know, you want to plug, stuff like that, hit him up. All right, I got you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I always wonder. I might, it gotta be like on the cheap end or something because, come on now, no fans, like eight yeah. games, come on, something. It gotta be free. Yeah, I, I know it was it was free for as long as the, like the pandemic while well, we were in quarantine because they were showing old games. But many, yeah, like at one time they charged like fifteen bucks. So $15. yeah, the shit. The NBA needs to cash now, so. Damn, what the but for Still the most, trying to take money out of people's pockets. Yeah. But for the most part, you can catch a lot of these games on uh, ESPN, TNT, and NBA TV. Running all day. Got something to watch. And, um, that'll be that, that'll be good to see. Have Nice to have some back on TV. So. That's for sure. Definitely, I, we need something. This finally, man, it's like March Madness. <laughs> yeah, exactly, All exactly. All day, and uh, finally talk about some uh, some real basketball and get ourselves uh, acclimated again to normalcy. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you know they don't have any, like too many COVID positives come out of nowhere, and um, just. Just sucks. So I wanted the Knicks to get a worse spot because we about to get screwed in the lottery <laughs> hard. I wanted top three. We about to get seventh, picking up hella Burton or something like that. But um, yeah, it's gonna be nice to get some kind of normal action going. Seeing who's actually in the best shape. It's gonna be all about freaking nutrition, man. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be real interesting. 
some of these players just might might not have it. And some players just going to run like the L.A. Like, I can't wait to go over the West because that's going to be it's going to be hard hitting. But we kind of know who's coming out of the West anyway. It's either going to be one of the L.A. teams and I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. This, this restart kind of, you know, put everything back. I, I think Paul George is good, but I think Denver has a chance. It's, um, that eight spot is interesting. It depends on who gets it. You know, Paul mm-hmm. get it. They give the Lakers some trouble. Um, that, that West is real, real interesting. Yeah, oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. A lot of young, a lot of young teams, man. And, and besides. Be- yeah, and besides, one of these guys is going to call a stripper up and just fuck the whole thing up anyway. So, <laughs> Harden, we are talking about you. <laughs> but, um, definitely, yeah, it's going to be – I can't wait, man. I really can't wait. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, excited to see what happens. This is, you know, mm-hmm. what we need. Um, you know, I pretty much the Eastern Conference for this week. And, you know, do you have any parting words for our viewers at home? As usual, you know, love doing this with you, brother. It's always fun. Never a dull moment. Check out our other podcasts. You know, you know the, you know the deal. Mm-hmm. Hard job. You know, our flagship, you know, Dong City, you know, us, freaking, you know, Sean Guy's little thing. You need a name for that or something. But um, <laughs> in the lab, you check them out, man. We Everybody does a great job. You know, check out our group, Daily Life. You know, we truly are a family. And I'm honored to be a part of it. Oh, excuse me, the Audible. My brother's over there. Randy and Matt does kill it. I can't wait to see y'all go. To the NFC least. Yeah, I said that shit. Um, this, this Friday. It's going to be good. So, yep. Oh, this Friday. Be there, be square. And like I said, let's keep this ball rolling, people. We're going for 20, man. We're going for Allie Houston. Yeah, I said, shut up, Leon. That's right. I'll plug the mix. Damn right. Plug my name, Yeah, I, I can't get another 20 in my head. You, 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 might, you might have to win. Damn right. It's my constitutional right. We're about to end this right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, actually, I got one more thing. Um, Because I want to thank our, our last guest who was on uh, two weeks ago, Corey. Um, he was great. Yes. Um, you know, he shared his, his thoughts on the Warriors and, and Steph Curry and their deal. But um, I, I I noticed he came away with some really bad messages from a man, Dilo. <laughs> I was wondering why you were wearing that shirt. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I see it. Yeah, yeah he, old, he says, you gotta you gotta yeah, stop, bro. <laughs> yeah, you really gotta stop. It's ice in his veins. That that was that was wild. Yeah, just like uh, Steph. Thing. Yeah, man. Yeah. My boy, young, kind of you're steaming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can thank him again. Uh, and, uh, you know, thank you guys for tuning in. Always appreciate the participation. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Matt. Uh, sure. Johnny. Everybody. And, uh, you know, we'll catch you guys again next week and catch our live shows. And uh, sure. until next time, you know, fall out, man. Yes, sir, all day. We matter. <laughs>